this video, I'm going to review the settings for Google Classroom. There aren't that many, but there's a couple of important things that you want to consider before you add your students. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that I am using the new version of Google Classroom, and you can tell by looking up at the top of your screen, if you see something that says Classwork, that is the new 2018 version. Um, if it says Students in the middle, then you would be using uh, the classic one. Um, it is quite a bit different, so just wanted to point that out. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to consider when you create your course is uh, what to do with your cover photo. So this, you know, picture right here, Google's going to put one in there for you. You can use the one they give you if you want. You can click the select theme button over on the right side and select from one of their um, pre-made options. Or if you want, you can upload your own. A lot of people like to upload a nice class photo, something like that. Um, I'm also going to give you guys access to this Google drawing, which would allow you to create your own. This is size to fit in Google Classroom. So I'll give you this template, you know, put anything you want on that page. Then you're just going to go to file, download as JPEG. And then we're going to go back to the class and I'm going to use the upload photo option and select that from uh, wherever it's currently stored. For me, it's my downloads folder. Um, and that will um, fit nicely into that uh, that spot. Now, it is important to note that, um, you know, people are going to be looking at Google Classroom on a variety of devices, mobile phones, tablets, big screens, small screens. And so the sizing here is not precise. Um, you want to kind of minimize the amount of text that you have. You can see it kind of crops and moves it around. And if I have a smaller screen, it'll even shrink it further, bigger screen, it'll stretch it a little bit. So it's not precise. Don't You can't be a perfectionist if you're going to upload your own photo. So that's just a more cosmetic, but something that a lot of teachers um, enjoy doing. Google has consolidated all of the settings for Google Classroom into one central location, which is very nice. So you now notice that you have this gear, the fidget spinner, up in the top right corner. And by clicking on that, it gets me access to all the settings that were previously kind of scattered all throughout Google Classroom. Um, the first thing that uh, you'll want to do is uh, just identify your class code, uh, which is automatically generated for you. Um, you're going to want to look at that code. If it has an I, an L, a 1, an O, a 0, uh, you're probably going to want to reset that code uh, just to make it easier for your students. You can't pick, but you can reset. And so you just keep clicking that reset button until you get a code that uh, looks, looks good, that will work um, well. Um, the second thing you're going to want to do is determine what your students can post into your classroom. Now, you're going to get these three options, um, but I'm going to tell you right away that you probably are not going to want to um, use this first one, post and comment. That's generally not a good idea. Uh, creates a lot of confusion. I would encourage you to move it to either students can only comment or turn it off entirely. Now, if this is not permanent, you can adjust this anytime you want. Um, the commenting feature in Google Classroom is marvelous if students use it appropriately. So it will require a little bit of teaching and modeling if you're going to uh, leave commenting on. So uh, you'll make that decision and uh, select it. Um, Guardian Summaries allows parents to get some insight into their students' work. Um, you're going to want to either commit to using it and turn it on, which is uh, what mine is right now, or say, you know what, I'm going to communicate with parents in other means and turn it off. What I would encourage you to avoid is leave it on but not really actively use it. Um, and there's some reasons for that that uh, I'll explain in a different video. Um, so either you're going to do it, turn it on, or you're not going to do it, and you're going to turn it off. Um, the last thing I want to show you on this page, it's, it's a little hidden. Um, I've already kind of added it so it, it expands. But at the top of your screen, you're just going to see the name of your course. If you click on the Edit, click on this pencil, it's going to open up a series of options here. And that will allow your students, um, you can type in kind of a welcome and explanation description of your course. Um, your students are going to see it like this. So I'm a student now. And if I go to the about page for the course, that's what I'm going to see right here. Keep it short. I just literally copied and pasted the introduction from my syllabus on there. 
Um, if you have a preferred method of contact, you can put your email, you know, office phone, however you want them to, uh, to contact you. Keep it short. That's just really a text um, area. Those are the big um, settings to Google Classroom. Um, there's really not a whole lot that you need to configure, just those few things. You can always come back and adjust them later on if you need to.